Hey everybody, Charlie here, and thanks for assembling on us. Today we're joined by good friend of the show, Phil Shifley. How's it going, Phil? How does it look like it's going, idiot? Yeah, good point. My bad. Uh, today's plan was for Phil and I to show you about field expedient fire starting methods, but things got a little out of control. Right, Phil? I hate you so much. Right. Um, so instead, we're going to show you some field expedient ways to treat third and fourth degree burns to the head, and also some things that you might want to have in your survival first aid kit uh, to treat burns before we transport Phil here to the hospital. What do you say, Phil? <laughs> oh, Phil's for it. Okay. Stay tuned. All right, one of the store-bought items that you might want to get a hold of and keep in your mm -hmm. first aid kit is, uh, go ahead and show that to him, Phil. This is a Roehampton sterile burn sheet. Guaranteed sterile unless this <laughs> unless this packaging is uh, you know, open in some way. This is something that you can uh, wrap the burn patient in before you transport him to the hospital. So that's one thing that we might be able to put into our kit. Um, so the, uh, the idea here again is this is going to be incredibly sensitive uh, to any kind of air moving across those burn nerve endings. So we want to try to protect that as much as possible with a clean sterile dress. And we've done the best that we can with this improvised t-shirt. Phil was doing some stop, drop, and roll techniques, which uh, you can see that right here. We got that fire put out. We stopped any further burning. And now he's got some dirt and debris up on that. So the first thing we want to do, go ahead and show him that water, Phil. We had some water in our pack. We want to clean that wound off the best we can with some room temperature water, get as much of dirt and debris off of that wound as we possibly can before we apply our dressing. Well, Phil was doing stop, drop, and roll, and I sprang into action and covered him with dirt and stuff to put out the burning. He's got a lot of thing, you know, dirt and stuff on the wound. We need to clean that out the best we can before we wrap, wrap our sterile dressing around it. So we've just got some water here. Go ahead and close your eyes, Phil. Tilt your head back for me just a little bit. What we're trying to do here, there you are, buddy, is just get clean off, just like that. Just, you know, you don't want to go in there and start scrubbing it's on this thing. It's as cold as your heart. <laughs> we want to just get all as much as that as we can off, okay? And then what we can do is lightly, because we want this to be dry when we put it on, is just take something and come in and very lightly sort of dab at this, try to clean this up just a little bit and dry it off before we go ahead and wrap him up. Right? Right. All right, everybody. We've got Phil put out. We've stopped further burning. We've cleaned off the wound uh, with our room temperature water to try to get that dirt and debris out. And now we're going to go ahead and loosely cover this with our improvised dressing to protect the wound and keep it from getting... So anymore. you're doing this now? Right. Man, you're the worst survivalist in the universe. Yeah, I know. We should have gotten to this a lot sooner, but we're doing the best that we can. So we're going <laughs> to go ahead and wrap him up, and we'll show you what that looks like. All right, everybody, we've finished wrapping this off, and then we just tied it loosely in the back. We don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on this. Again, the idea here is just to protect the wound as much as we can. Yeah, but it still hurts like crap. Yeah, it does. It hurts bad. Now, we've left this loosely wrapped here so that he can breathe, and we left it up to the patient. We could have wrapped his eyes, but for patient comfort and security, he wanted to be able to see. So we went ahead and just left his eyes so that he could see what was going on and keep him a little bit calmer. If that's not working out... I wanted to see how much stupider you were, you menace. <laughs> we could have gone ahead and wrapped the eyes and protected those a little bit, but it was his choice. He decided he wanted to be able to see, so that's why we left the eyes open like that. You doing okay? Right. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, and really, that's about it. Now we want to get him... Um, to the hospital as fast as we can. Obviously with a facial burn like this and a bad one we're worried about respiratory complications. He's got a lot of superheated air up into his nostrils, down into his throat. That's why he's been having some trouble talking. Lungs probably damaged so we want to monitor for signs and symptoms of shock um, and manage that airway and, and this is a priority. Get him to the hospital and definitive care as quickly as we possibly can. So thanks Phil for being such a good sport and letting us set you on fire today. We really appreciate that. When I get to the hospital, I'm going to strike. <laughs> and uh, as always, thanks for assembling on us, and we hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. Peace.